Hello Internet, I'm Matt Haas, this is Awesome Wood Things, and today I'm going to take my 23-year-old office desk, modify it, and change it into this. Why did I do it? What makes it awesome? This piece was too short, this island was awkward, no one could sit there, and the legs were all the way to the end, I would bash my knees into it all the time. Here, it's easier for you to see an animation. And this is what I created much better. Here's why it's awesome. It starts with strips of plywood as the inner core, making a torsion box that's lightweight and very strong. A thin piece of hardboard on the bottom, thicker plywood on the top, white countertop laminate, and the whole thing is wrapped in solid walnut, with one side being thick end grain with a huge round over. It's kind of like a cutting board and it's awesome. Here's a close-up of the trim. It is just gorgeous. And the roundover is easier on your arms. Now the countertop laminate, that is the best surface for a desk because you can write on it, you can drop stuff on it, you can spill stuff on it, and unlike glass or other shiny surfaces, it'll work with an optical mouse. The surface has been lowered to keyboard height, the legs have been moved, and there's an awesome cable management system underneath. I'll show you how to build it, but just be aware that every decision that has been made has been scrutinized to ensure maximum efficiency and to make sure you can use this desk to get stuff done. Ideally, you're a woodworker and can build this yourself or pay me a lot of money. It took six months. Complete build instructions are on Instructables. All right, off to the build video. Enjoy. It starts by cutting down plywood into 28 strips. And you only need one full sheet of plywood, four by eight. That's it, just one. After all of the strips are cut down to size, I assemble them on this completely flat surface with wood glue. That is incredibly strong. I do use brad nails to keep everything held together while the glue dries so I can keep working. I mark the location of those horizontal rails on what will be the underside of the desk. I'll need to throw some brad nails in there at a later stage. You can see I used pencil to mark where the inner core will go. Do you notice these clamps? When I assembled this there was a slight bow and that was my solution to straighten everything out. Now that that backer's on there, it will never bow again. Brad nails and glue, baby. That's what it's all about. Here I'm using the jigsaw to get close to the edge. Sawdust is cool. And you can see the edge doesn't look really nice. Never fear, the router is here. A flush trim bit makes everything perfect. After this, I turn the table around and, not surprisingly, more wood glue and brad nails, of course. After I use the jigsaw to get the surface close to the edge, once again, here comes the router to clean everything up. And of course, sawdust is cool. Now I get to play with angles for the corner piece. Same technique, build the frame, add the backer, lots of brad nails, trim, and route. Here's the surface, plywood, trim it, route it, and now we're ready for the laminate. I put contact adhesive on the underside of the laminate, and I could have used a larger brush, but this is all I had. Then you put it aside and let it dry. I know that doesn't sound right, but this has to be dry for it to work. The instructions say to go around the outside an additional time. The outside's the most important. Once it's dry and tacky, you lay them on top of each other, separating them with these little sticks, 
and then one by one you push them together. Once they're together, they bond instantly. You don't get a second chance. They do make rollers to push these two pieces together, but I just use my hands. It seems to work just fine. And then the flush trim bit on the router makes everything perfect. I repeat those steps for the larger desk segments. You may have noticed I always have a full face shield, dust mask, and hearing protection. There's so much that can go wrong with the router, you just need to minimize the risk. And now the part you've all been waiting for, the solid wood trim. Now these pieces I completely squared up in a previous step. And I take two passes to make one board into two boards. Now I didn't get it perfectly centered, so I moved the fence just a bit and I ran everything through again to make sure they all have exactly the same width. And I did that quite a lot. I gave each piece just one quick pass on the bench top jointer and that cleaned up the back side. and a little sanding never hurt anybody. Then I had to square up the edges because these will butt up against each other. Wood glue holds it all together. I use a little bit of CA glue for a fast bond. The CA glue will act like a clamp to hold everything in place while the very strong wood glue dries. The wood glue does all the work long term. And I just repeat this process around the edges. To make it flush, I hold the router in this awkward position and it does the job pretty well. You just have to be very mindful which way that router bit is spinning. A manual chisel cleans up the edges. You'd better like sawdust because it gets everywhere. Now to clean this up, I just take this little handheld belt sander. It does a nice job. And I continue to clean up all of the edges. I use a quarter inch roundover bit to break the hard edge. Now I work on the larger trim that will be end grain. The part of the desk that faces me, the side that's not on the wall, will get this larger trim treatment. And you build it like a cutting board. I'm cutting things down into strips and that piece was awkward for some reason. So I continued this process until everything's the same width. I square up two edges on the jointer. Now both those edges are 90 degrees to each other. Over on the surface planer, I get the top side parallel with the bottom and then the table saw is the last edge. Now they are completely 90 degrees. As you can see, cutting boards require a lot of cutting. Even though this will be trim, still the same. Lots of cuts. And then the glue up.
I will clean up the glue squeeze out on the top, but the bottom, I use the bench top belt sander for that. I use the cross cut sled to cut everything down into strips. And then use my table saw jointing jig to clean up the one side. The next step will be to use the router table to apply that huge round over. The size of that bit is gargantuan, quite scary. I added boards to the back to get more surface area. That's important and a huge safety feature. And then I just raise the bit slightly each time. There's a lot of material being removed. I go slow. Then I pry off that back. Again, it's just hot glue and then make everything the same height. I use a biscuit jointer to give even more surface area for the already very strong and powerful wood glue to grab onto. Just like last time, a little bit of CA glue acts as a quick clamp. Although I don't use activator this time, it does dry pretty quick and some tape holds everything together. Now the trick here is you've got to get the surface married up perfectly. You will not have a chance to make that flush afterwards. And this biscuit just gave me problems so I threw it on the ground. No big deal. And here a manual saw is used because I would love to use a power tool but this was the best tool for the job and I clean it up with the belt sander. Even after that, it doesn't look the best, but no one will see that side anyway. And now I almost cut the wrong angle. After freaking out a little bit, I got it correct. This will go on the corner piece. And same technique. All right. And here is the cable management system. A single pocket hole will hold these together and you can see there's sides for two different cables to run. And I know a single screw is not that strong, but these will face the wall. They'll only carry cables and they won't get banged around or anything. They're perfect. I did not build table legs. I reused the ones I had, but the plans do show you how. And here we go, it's finally done. I absolutely love it. And tell me where to buy new chisels, mine were awful. Remember, if you wanna build this, more details are on Instructables for free, and I have plans for sale that are super detailed. All the measurements, cut list, how to break down the boards, you name it. Thanks, internet. Like that smash button on your way out, hit the bell, more awesomeness is on the way.